Okay, so uh, we want to look at uh, inferences for a single proportion. So the whole idea here is um, that I run an experiment. So let's go here. Um, so I run an experiment. Uh, in which I get uh, successes and failures. Now, what's a success and what's a failure? Uh, it really doesn't matter from the standpoint of, you know, what do I think is good, what do I think is bad. Um, uh, a success uh, could be that someone um, has a heart attack. Now, why would that be a success? Because it's what I'm counting. Okay, so uh, what this means is um, I am counting outcomes and um, when I do that, uh, there are uh, two types of outcomes. Okay, so those two types in the statistics world, mathematics world, uh, we call those um, successes and failures. Okay, and, and so um, we run this experiment and uh, what we do is we simply keep track of uh, n, uh, the number of trials um, okay so a trial is I just perform the experiment so let's uh, take something um, relatively simple uh, like I don't know I'm a stats keeper uh, for a basketball team and uh, so um, I might want to keep count of the number of times <coughs> excuse me number of times um, players uh, have a free throw and then the outcomes so <coughs> in this case you know, uh, um, P, uh, well, S maybe. Um, actually, what the heck does your book call it? Let's, uh, do they give a name for a letter for uh, successes and failures? Nah, I don't think they do. I think they, uh, so looking at it there, um, they, uh, I think just, uh, uh, call them successes and failures and so we get to make up our own so we'll go back here um, so we'll call it S the number of uh, um, successes now sometimes it'll be uh, say uh, lowercase n the number of trials and then like n1 would be the number of successes we'll go with S um, the number of successes and then uh, F is the, n the um, number of failures. Now so these are all very very much linked together. Um, we have that uh, the number of successes plus the number of failures better be the total number of trials Okay, because I can only have those two outcomes, uh, successes and failures for this uh, initial stuff. And now um, the text then talks about um, a single proportion, but I want to start right off the bat of pointing out, well really there are two proportions here. Um, we will keep track of p hat, and that's our uh, observed our data, our observed proportion of successes 
Okay, so we have that, and um, and we get that. We calculate that simply by taking you know um, s over n. Okay, number of successes over the number of trials. So that's our p hat, the proportion of successes. And you know, typically, if we go back to the free throw sort of thing, um, I think teams tend to like to see 80 and 90 percent uh, three free throw successes. And you know, so it could be that if I've had players go to the free throw line, uh, you know, 48 times, uh, you know, um, so in that case, right, they've gone to the line 48 times and perhaps um, they've had uh, 36 successes, you know, something like that. And so in that case, our p hat is 36 over 48. And, well, what the heck is that? I, I can reduce that, actually. Uh, I can divide both top and bottom by 6 and get uh, 6, or actually by 12. So. Um, I get three fourths or 0.75. Okay, so perhaps the team in that case had a 75% free throw percentage, uh, which probably as a team that's not bad at all. Uh, I don't know. Some of you could correct me on that if I'm wrong. Um, but there, there's the proportion that they will talk about in in this first kind of stuff and what we'll zero in on, but I would like to point out that a second proportion um, is the proportion of failures over total number of successes, and um, so we have that. Now we typically, um, the textbook and so forth won't have a name for this. Um, we can get it from 1 minus p hat. And, and so that's a perfectly good proportion. Now, in some textbooks and so forth, um, you might call it Q hat. So I guess we're watching, <coughs> watching our P's and Q's. And, and so you could call it Q hat. I might call it Q hat at times. Um, uh, but it is the observed proportion of successes. Okay. Now, um, so that said, okay, I go collect data. Uh, we'll take that example of the p hat of uh, 0.75. And um, now what we'd like to do is get an idea, approximate um, this, uh, um, our distribution of three, three uh, free throw success, um, our actual population distribution. Uh, we'd like to approximate that with a normal distribution and then use that to uh, answer some questions. And, and so um, all we have here are these data of n equal 48, uh, s equal 36, f equal 12 then, um, and so I could write that down here, I guess. Q hat in this case was um, 12 over 48, or uh, 0.25. And notice they do add up to 1. Okay, so that's from over here. You have P hat plus Q hat is 1, because it's all our total outcomes. Um, but now, what distribution should I associate with this? Because um, this was a random sample, right? You know, um, if what we're trying to predict, right? Um, so we would uh, like to know the actual. Um, proportion of successes in our population.
Okay, that's what I would actually like to know. And um, what we have is our p hat, our observed amount, estimates um, our actual uh, p. Okay, now notice this is where you get a lot of the letter p running around here. We have a p hat, I have a p. We talk about a p value. Well, but if I say p value, that's different than if I say p. p is simply this proportion of successes. And um, so, you know, when we go and take data, we just estimated p, but I really don't know what it is. Okay? And at some point, though, we would like to kind of know, well, okay, I, I estimated P to be 0.75, okay, so in our current example, we estimated it to be 0.75, which was our 36 out of 48 successes. And, um, and so now, though, well, it's probably not really 0.75. Right, you know, and, and what is this proportion? Well, it is sort of what we could assume the team should make overall in um, free throws. What proportion should they make? Well, it might be 0.75, but it might be 0.8. Maybe the team was having an off night or off week or whatever. It would take a while to get 100 free throws. Um, so maybe they were off a little bit for a short time. Uh, maybe they're actually not as good as, as 0.75. Maybe they're really 0.7, and they just happen to have a, a good streak going there for a little bit. You know, so, so what might it actually be? And so here's where we kind of look at a picture. So here's a normal distribution, and we're going to say the right answer is P, and now I'm just going to put p hat, um, you know, up here uh, somewhere. So there's p hat, and uh, I could have put it lower. It, it, you know, again, I'm I'm just trying to give a, a idea of of what we're doing when we make calculations. So, you know, p is is here. But the only information we have is p hat, and um, and so uh, as we as we look at this, what we what we'd like to do is is kind of go with this uh, usually an alpha idea of of 0.05 alpha 0.05, but um, it may be that uh, we want uh, a different alpha, but let's go with 0.05 for now. So our threshold of uh, having a, a type 1 error would be uh, that you know we want to be right 95 percent of the time. And, and so um, as, I, as I look at my normal distribution, I can go out here plus or minus two standard deviations, so two minus two sigma, plus two sigma out here. So that's P plus, P minus. And, um, you know, what I should find is that P hat should be inside of, he, of this region, whatever that is, 95% um, of the time. Okay. Now the way I drew it, you know, possibly we'll have to look at numbers and so forth to see. But uh, possibly, let's just for the heck of it, say, you know, that was 0 0.7, this was 0 0.75, uh, but maybe you know, 95% uh, out here uh, is something different, um, you know, 0.8 or something like that. Okay. Well, so that means I run this experiment. I get a, a p hat. I get an estimate. Okay, it goes in there. 
I run it again, oh, maybe it came there. So here's my first experiment, here's my second experiment. Third experiment, you know, maybe it's really close. Fourth experiment, close again. Fifth experiment, maybe I'm way out here. P5 hat, okay? Well, sure, that could happen. Right? If I run this experiment a hundred times, I would expect five of those times uh, to be outside of that 95% population area. Okay, But most of the time, 95% of the time, I would expect to be in here. Now, how do we use that for kind of guessing where P might be? Well, if I instead here's P, here's my P hat that I have, and if I were to draw my distribution, same distribution, it's supposed to be the same one, but I just slid it to the right so that now it's sitting over this. And now, you know, I put in my minus two sigma and plus two sigma to get 95% of the population in between here. Well, actually, then 95% of these P hats, again, looking up here, you know, that one, that one, that one, that one, so P1, P2, P3, P4, if I did that same thing for each of those and slid the, the um, population so that it's it's uh, the normal population's mean was right over my data um, what would happen is my actual value of P would be inside here 95% of the time because when I slide it this way if that P hat was within the bounds you know, left to right this way of P, then when I slide it over here to the right, it, P will still be within the bounds. Okay, think of just taking, you know, this, this length here, and um, if I slide it right now, it's centered on the real P. Um, if I slide it, so let's draw it again here, so it's centered on the real P. If I start sliding it this way or that way, right or left, um, what's going to happen is any point that was in here, you know, we'll call that our P hat, um, if I slide it so that this center spot is now over that center spot, then this P will still be inside the interval. Okay, so I can do that 95% of the time. So that means 95% of the time, okay, 95% of the time, if I make a uh, 1 minus alpha confidence interval oops confidence interval um, around p hat it will contain p the right answer Okay, because what I'm doing is I'm starting assuming that normal distribution here and then saying, you know, well, where's 95% of my population? And so that's kind of made my interval here. But now I don't know, I don't actually know P, but I know the size of that interval or I can get a pretty good estimate of the size of that interval. And, and so then... Um, if I make that interval and center it at p hat, 
again, since 95% of my p-hats are inside that interval to start with, so 95% of the time this p-hat is in that original interval, when I shift it, you know, over to the right in this case, p will still be in the interval 95% of the time. That means, you know, I will have experiments where that's tr not true, you know, that if I make that interval, P will not be in it. But 95% of the time, uh, P is in an interval that I make. Okay, so that's what we mean by this confidence interval. We just want to construct, um, we know P hat, so what we need to know to construct the interval around it so we want to take p hat plus or minus um, two standard errors. And again, a standard error is simply, okay, a standard error is the is a standard deviation okay, of a sampling distribution. Okay, so it's it's the distribution of some sample statistic that I'm taking. In this case, I'm taking the proportion of successes. And so instead of talking about its, its standard uh, deviation, I talk about its standard error, okay? And, and so, um, and the reason I'm going with about two, it's actually 1.96, but um, the reason I'm going with two standard deviations is the rule of thumb that says, uh, or two standard errors, is that says for a normal population, um, if I go minus two standard errors up to plus two standard errors, I get 95% of the population. And, and, uh, and so that's why I'm saying two or 1.96. If I wanted um, less, say I wanted a 90% confidence interval, uh, in other words, my, my threshold alpha went to 10% because uh, alpha is out here. You know, this stuff is alpha. So there's alpha over 2 and alpha over 2. Uh, that's when I'm wrong. Um, so if I wanted alpha to be 10% instead of 5%, oh, well then instead of 1.96 or about 2, uh, I would use 1.645. Okay. Um, but that's, we just need the standard error and then we can calculate this thing. So um, the standard error uh, for our population uh, is estimated by um, standard error equals, and it is, um, actually, let's go find the formula here, just to show you right where it is, and there we go, uh, that is page 124, and so our standard error, we're going to estimate to be our um, uh, p hat. Now they just have written p there, but we're, we're talking about a confidence interval here, and so all we know is p hat. 1 minus p hat and divided by n. Okay, so to make our confidence interval, um, let's go back here. Uh, we have our standard error is the square root of p hat minus uh, or times 1 minus p hat uh, divided by n. Okay, so 
another way to write it, I could write it as uh, p hat times q hat uh, divided by n. So for us, that standard error in our particular case, we had um, uh, p hat was uh, 36 over 48, or 0.75, um, square root here. Uh, we had 12 over 48, and then divided by 48. So we have that number, and um, that is uh, equal to um, what? Well, you know, this is where we've got something in Desmos. Uh, so if I come back here, and I look here, here's a confidence interval for a uh, single proportion. Let's click on that. And that brings up uh, my, my Desmos uh, thing here. And it already has some numbers in it. We just need to change them. And so uh, N, we said, was 48. So I'll change N. And you see that changed up the confidence interval here. It moved it around. Um, then our number of successes uh, was 36. Okay, and I see it moved it over here. I've got to kind of grab this and I'm just using my mouse to pull it over. Okay, so we have that. And failures, I actually have to write that in. It might be nice if it was just calculated uh, automatically, but it's not. And um, so now we see here it says p hat 0.75 then we have the standard error um, p hat times 1 minus p hat over n and so we see that's 0 0.0625 okay and so I'm going to um, go back here and write down that this is uh, 0 0.0625 and so what that means is our 95% confidence interval okay our 95% confidence interval is our p hat plus or minus 1.96 times 0 0.0625 um, and our p hat was 0.75 so uh, that's um, plus or minus um, 1.96 times 0 0.0625 well that's about two times that so this is about um, and we'll, we can look on uh, decimals to get the actual the actual answer uh, but this is about um, so squiggly equal signs you know our p hat uh, actually let me write in 0 0.75 um, 0 0.75 uh, plus or minus 2 uh, times 0 0.0625 so that's 0 0.75 plus or minus uh, 0 0.125 like that and so the the high side is around 0.875. The low side, if I subtract 0.125, is around uh, what 0.625. So that is my uh, approximately my 95% confidence interval. But we'll go back here to uh, Desmos and uh, here is the margin of error uh, is what it's called 1.96 so my um, z uh, alpha over 2 value that I need 1.96 uh, times um, my standard error up there it's actually 0.1225 um, I had 0.125 as an estimate so this is 0.1225 and when I add and subtract that, I can see right here that I get uh, point zero or zero point sorry six 
um, 275 and my upper bound is 0 0.8725 okay so close you know there was a good estimate but this is the actual answer uh, for my 95 percent confidence interval and I can get it there off of um, Desmos quite easily okay so there is um, given my data that is how I calculate a 95% uh, confidence interval and I believe uh, this is uh, because uh, it's got the 196 in there um, this is set up to only do 95% uh, confidence intervals okay so we will call that uh, good for this video